Welcome to episode one of Top Sports Talk presented by Top Sports News. I am one of your hosts, Caleb Jenneret, and joining me is my co-host, Isaac Deer, the famous. Um, Isaac, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well. I mean, I'm excited to I, I'm excited to get this launch with you. You're the you're the expert in all things video, so I, I'm kind of blessed to have you as my co-host. But um, honestly, just giving these kids more exposure, um, I think is kind of why we launched this in the first place. So I'm kind of excited to get kids more content and, and, and make sure that they're getting the recognition that they deserve. So I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to kind of get this podcast started with you. I'm the fortunate one to be joined by Everyone knows Isaac in the in the Topeka in the Topeka sports uh, community, so um, I feel like the honor is all mine. But obviously, usually we're going to be recapping uh, the week prior games and previewing the next weeks. But since no games have happened right now, we will just be previewing this year's season as a total. We're going to go through every city and Shawnee County team um, alphabetically and just look into what kind of schedule we're looking at, what kind of season we're looking at how last season ended for him. Um, Just a preview, general preview of the season, really break out um, this podcast, as Isaac said. So pretty excited. Before we do get started, I want to thank our gold sponsors, uh, Invista Credit Union and the Family Guidance Center for continuing to sponsor Top Sports News. I'm just ready to get started. So first on alphabetical order is Care Paravel. So Care Paravel is moving up to Keisha, eight-man division one, I believe, um, so last year in their division, they went 11 and 0, but it's going to be a little bit tougher this year as they obviously they start the year off with Axtell, Burlingame, and they play Burlingame, they play Linden, and they play Chase County, all who have made deep playoff runs. Um, and they lost their star QB and their star D lineman. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for Care Paravel as they finally get into the Keisha ranks. But um, what do you think? What do you think about Care Paravel's season this year? Yeah, yeah. As you mentioned, uh, 11 and 0 last year, one of the most successful teams in the city and in the county. Um, Care Paravel, like you mentioned, uh, lost Carter Bryan, who was actually one of the one of the the best quarterbacks in the nation when it comes to eight man football. Uh, 2,515 yards and 51 touchdowns with just one interception last year. So losing that amount of offense, it's definitely going to hurt. And then they have Noah Hastert that they're losing. Uh, going to Pitt State, Noah, Noah's a was a fantastic tight end, lengthy, six foot five, six foot six tight end, the automatic uh, red zone target, and then Max Colombo, who uh, got some snaps in the backfield. He was a, a great piece um, of that successful Care Paravel offense, which was honestly just a wagon last year. Uh, they finished off um, with a sixty four to sixteen win over St. Mary's Academy in the uh, Kansas Christian Athletics Association state title game. Um, but like I, I mentioned, losing 51 touchdowns and one interception from the guy under center is a huge loss. But um, this year, I mean, they have some key returners. And you mentioned they start out right right out of the gate with Axel, and that's going to be kind of a brutal matchup and a wake-up call. Welcome to Keisha. It's, right. <laughs> it's not always greener on the other side, but Care Paravel's – Got some guys, you know, they got uh, Jackson Benura and then uh, Jude Borchers, Ian Bryan, Evan Will, Simon Everhart all coming back, and they played a huge part in the offense last year. They didn't get as many targets as Hastert did last year, um, but, you know, in eight-man football, you play everywhere. So, but Hastert, you know, with the size and the frame, he was um, a very good security blanket for Carter Bryan last year, but uh, do I see – do I see Care, Bar- Care Paravel having the year that they had last year? No, uh, that's just quite frank. No, do I do I think it's going to be a huge drop off? Not necessarily. I think there's definitely some winnable games in there. Um, you know, Axel is going to be a tough game. They have Linden on September 23rd, a Flint Hills League team, and then they have Chase County um, October 14th, which will be tough as well. They drop from 11 man to eight man. Um, so yeah, they'll. they'll It'll definitely be a learning curve for them, but um, kind of what I'm curious to see is who's going to be under center for them this year because they have Jace Pavlik and Evan Will, who did take some uh, snaps last year, but um, I'll be curious. I think that'll be kind of the one big headline that we'll see from Care Bear Bell is who's going to be taking the snaps uh, for the Lions, and they definitely have 
great athletes all around, especially for eight man. I mean, they went 11 and 0 and, and took the state title last year for a reason. And um, yeah, so, I mean, I'm excited to see what they have um, coming back this year. And I think that care pair should definitely be a team uh, that we keep our eyes on, on, on both sides of the ball, offense and defense, because defensively they were just as dominant last year. So I'm excited to look, uh, look forward to what, kind of care Paravel has in this new journey in Keisha, but um, we'll see. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Whoever winds up under center is going to have some big shoes to fill for sure. Um, so Hayden, they went eight and two last year and they have some tough teams on their schedule. They have the defending champ Olpe. They have powerhouse server Lake uh, back-to-back state champs, Rossville and Holton, who I know is going to be dang good this year. Um, so no, no easy games for Hayden this year, but they do return Notre Dame commit Joe Otting. And that's going to be, that's going to be huge for him, obviously. So I think Hayden is going to be Hayden. I think they're going to have a successful year, but um, how successful I think depends on, you know, how they line up next to these powerhouse teams that yes, they're in a lower division, but it's still, you still got back-to-back state champs in there. So I think it's going to be tough for him. Yeah, and I think Rick Pearson, um, the main writer and kind of the, the backbone of topsports.news, I think he put on his prep parade series uh, on Hayden. He said that I think it was since 1929, 1930. I don't have the exact notes on me, but Hayden will not have a city school on its schedule this fall, which will be kind of kind of odd. I mean, they got county teams with Silver Lake and Rossville, but yeah, oh, brutal, brutal schedule for some of these teams um in the county uh, we'll go deeper into some of the other schools but Hayden Hayden definitely does not have an easy share of the schedule I, I think that um you know with with Holton and Rossville and Silver Lake you mentioned all those schools it's just going to be going to be tough but the thing that that really stands out to me about Hayden is that front five that mauling offensive front that they have led by as you mentioned the Notre Dame commit Joe Otting and they have Ben Evans and and Car- Carter Travat down there and that's huge core pieces of that offensive line because they just I mean it's pretty simple they just want to run the ball down your throat and they're really successful at it and, you know and I think that they'll definitely see some success from it I think but when you get some smaller smaller schools you usually tend to get smaller defensive lines and and those blitzing linebackers and stuff that they have to pick up with with that offense that they have um but Offensively, and you know, if you flip it on on the defensive side of the ball, they last year out of the eleven games that they did play, seven of those games they just allowed six points or less. So you think about seven out of the eleven last games, just six points or less, you're going to win those games nine times out of ten. It's going to be nearly impossible for you to lose those. And I, with the amount of returners that that Hayden has, you know, I mentioned Oddings and. Otting and Evans and, and Travat, they have J.C. Cummings coming back and, and some of those other key pieces that kind of – that's the glue to that team. But offensively and defensively, I think this will be a huge year for them. I think they'll actually break out and potentially be better um, because, you know, you don't see that, you know, you're going to get much smaller guys. And not to discredit 2A or 3A football teams, it's just um, – seeing a different look can sometimes help a team as we'll talk about Highland park later. They, they have new blood and new teams and stuff like that. And I think that Hayden has a lot of momentum riding from last year and they have a lot of momentum just about everywhere in their program. So I think this is actually going to be a year to remember for, for Hayden. And I can see them making a run this year. Yeah. I think it all depends. Um, you just, you know what Hayden's going to do. They're going to run the ball. Um, they always run that same offense. They got they they they, they want to win in the trenches, as you mentioned, um, and it's worked for them for a long time. Um, we're just gonna have to see how it how it lines up against these powerhouse teams that are in two A with Silver Lake and in Rossville. Um, I'm excited to see those games, man. That's gonna be those are gonna be fun. Um, but yeah, you mentioned Highland Park, and that's who we have next. Cutting right to the chase, they've lost 65 games in a row. Um, they're gonna lean on Trey Richardson a lot this year to help in the streak possibly, which I think they have a really good shot to do. Um, and their schedule like Hayden features no city teams or any county teams. Um, so a lot of unknowns really with, with their schedule and how they're going to fare this year. I think they can have a successful year um, in terms of 
Highland Park standards. Not not one to bash on Highland Park at all, but when you lose 65 games in a row, winning that winning one game is is a pretty big deal. So I think they're going to take it one game at a time, um, and I think I think we're going to see some pretty good things at Highland Park this year. I think so too, and um, yeah, 65. That's <laughs> That is that is a momentum killer, but kind of what I mentioned with Hayden, it's like if you have this new style, new program, new teams that you're gonna face, sometimes that's just a it's just a weight off your shoulders. And I think that Highland Park, it's it's been a rough go for them. They've lost a lot of close games in the last couple of years. And um I think with Jermaine Monroe under the helm, I think anything's possible. I know you talked to Rick Pearson. I'm gonna mention his name a lot because like I said, if it if it weren't for him, we wouldn't be here. Um, so it is, and we'll mention him a lot. And he's had some great stories out on top sports news. You guys should go check it out if you can. But he talked to Jermaine Monroe the other day, and I, it, Jermaine Monroe, there was one there was one quote that really stood out to me, and I'm like, huh, oh, that's that's interesting. So the quote that he told Rick the other day, he said, "I have a list of goals every year that I look at. And I was starting, I was staring at all my goals all summer long." And I ended deleting the whole Google Doc, and I just put win. My one and only goal this year is to win, and that's what I told the boys. So I think that's the only thing that Highland Park wants to do, because once they win one game, they're going to know, hey, we can win way more of these. And I think with new leadership, new teams, everything, I think the, it's only looking up for Highland Park. And you mentioned Trey Richardson earlier, who I think – I think it's probably one of the best athletes in the city. And I, I don't think anybody would really disagree with that, but 32 passes for 523 yards. And he carried the ball 38 times for 674 yards. He also had a, a nagging shoulder injury last year that kind of sidelined him. So he still put up, up all those numbers despite being out some games and having that shoulder, shoulder injury. And, um, you know, he's Trey Richardson's kind of the epitome of box office. He's you, you want to go see this kid because he's just lights out. He's flashy. He's one of the most incredible athletes I've ever seen um, in high school football. And I think that Trey Richardson, it's all said and done. Once his senior season is over, he's going to be one of the most incredible athletes we've ever seen put on a uniform in this city's history. And there's, this is a cherished uh, sports city when it comes to high school sports, there's been some, fantastic athletes that have gone on and done some great things playing playing the national football league playing division one schools d2 schools that have really really shined and naia and you name it there's just been so many great football players to leave the city but i think trey richardson will probably be almost on the top of that list he'll definitely be one to remember but highland park itself you know it's trey richardson's not the whole team and and they got a lot of guys coming back. They got Aiden Drew Gregory. Um, he's kind of a receiver, running back hybrid, and um, he's at corner as well. Kwan Johnson is going to be under center for him this year, and I think another year. Um, just you know, just being around is going to be great for him. He's a D back as well, so you have three D backs coming back. You have Greg, Drew Gregory, you have Richardson, and you have Kwan Johnson, and then they have all sorts of guys in different places that are returning, but Mackie James and Gabe Davis making returns as well. I think, I think Highland Park's going to, it's going to change this year. And I think this is the year for them and um, it'll be good for them to get that first win so they can kind of carry it on. And that, that starts out with, like I said, Rick Peterson, his alum, Wyandotte game one. So we'll, we'll see kind of where it goes from there, but I think uh, people should be excited about what Highland Park's going to bring this year to the table. Yeah, and I think, um, especially in high school football, I think momentum is a huge thing. So if you win a couple games in a row, if you're Highland Park, you, you never know what that could lead to, especially with an athlete like Trey Richardson, as we mentioned, um, that can really do anything on the football field. So super excited to watch Highland Park play this year. And now we completely flip the script. We go from 65 losses in a row to five state titles over the last eight years in Rossville. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, five state titles in the last eight years, they won back-to-back -back state titles, but their schedule, they have to go through the same gauntlet. They got Hayden, they got Silver Lake, which is always going to be a close game. You got the war on 24 and then you got Holton, which I'm high on Holton this year, but, um, that's, that's totally different. Um, but yeah, you always got to know Rossville, Rossville's, Rossville's the top dog. They have been the top dog for, for a long time now, um, in Shawnee County wise. And 
to see them pitted against this city team with Hayden, I'm, I can't wait to see this. Um, but they did lose their star player. Tori Horak. Yeah, yeah. Tor, their quarterback. Yeah, Tori Horak. Horak lost him um, to graduation. Um, I got no doubt that they have athletes to fill that position. But um, excited to see what Rossville can do this year and to see if they can go back to back to back, you know. Yeah, that that twenty six game win streak is gonna be they're gonna be challenged this year. Like you said, Holden's on the schedule, Hayden's on the schedule, then the war on twenty four with Silver Lake every year is box office. That that one's fun. <laughs> I got the chance to go to two Silver Lake Roscoe games last year. One was in the regular season, um, where unfortunately Tori Horak went down with a with a significant injury that sidelined him for a few games where he saw running back Corey Catron step in and then kind of take the snaps and he kept that winning streak alive. They won them some games. Corey Catron was one of the MVPs on the team last year. And then the postseason, the winner goes to state is the biggest rivalry in the state and all the stakes were there. Um, Rossville and Silver Lake had quite the battle last year, but Rossville is definitely, you know, I think that's the common theme with these schools this year is the schedule is just brutal, right. man. It is, <laughs> it is brutally tough, but it's, um, yeah, so the 26 games in a row, back-to-back state titles, it was pretty evident last year that Rossville was was probably going to be back in the same position to win it all, that offense with Tori Horak and Corey Catron, and then the uh, Brody Leeds on the line with all those rest of those. They're just dudes. Jacob Carver and Garrett, you know, Barrett Leeds and all those guys are, are monsters up front. But what Derek Thomas has done for this program, this Rossville program, is – is top notch. He's elevated them to a whole new level. You know, with the historic value that that Rossville does have, uh, Thomas has made it better. He's honestly, I think that he's been he's ninety six and fifteen at his time in Rossville. Ninety six win and fifteen losses as a football coach in high school is just kind of unheard of. And you know, he's built a dynasty. And you think about it, it's like yes, you lost your star quarterback. Yes, you lost your star running back. Yes, you lost a outstanding leader in the trenches and Brody leads. And it's like, but at the same time, I think they'll be just fine. Um, you know, if history tells us anything, this team is well equipped um, to win double digit games again and make a significant run in the playoffs. But um, you know, there's uh, in a re- recent report uh, when Derek Thomas spoke to top sports that news, uh, Camden Horak, Taysen Horak. There's a lot of the last names, which, you, you'll understand when you're in Rossville, you'll see a lot of Horax and, and a, <laughs> a lot of P. Rines and all that. But uh, Camden and Taysen Horak and then the Cade P. Ryan are kind of all in the picture to, to take over uh, Horak's spot um, at QB1. Um, and, you know, P. Ryan's interesting. Cade P. Ryan is an incredible athlete. I think he's um, a unique Swiss Army knife kind of player. Uh, he can throw the ball. He can run. He's just a pure athlete. You know, those kids that are just like, you know, who's an athlete, you know, who's um, who can really just light it up anytime. And he's like that on the basketball court and every other sport that kid Piran's play. He's just an all around stud, but they return five starters on offense and then four on the defense. Um, they're just kind of building the team already like they need any help. But, but uh, yeah, so KP, you know, KP Ryan and the Horax, Camden and Taysen are kind of all in line to take that QB one spot. But, you know, you think about it, they got um, Jacob Carver, who's coming back in the trenches on both sides of the ball. You expect that with a small school, but Jacob Carver, offensive lineman, defensive lineman, he's just big dude is a big dude. And you just do not want to cross pass with this kid in the trenches, but P Ryan's coming back. Malik Jackson, who's also a great offensive lineman. He's coming back. Uh, Braden Hensley and then Trenton Barker um, will all be back. And Barrett Leitz, um, he'll be in the offensive def- offensive and defensive lineman to kind of keep building that continuity when he comes back. So, um, yeah, I think Rossville's in pretty good shape. I know they lost three, three superstars for that team, but I don't see them taking a significant step back, if that makes sense. Because defensively and offensively, I just think that rhythm is just way too good. Yeah, I agree. Now moving on to a city team, the always at least decent Seaman. Um, they went six and four last year, and they played two city teams this year, T West and Shawnee Heights, that both games I'm pretty excited about. So what do you think of Seaman this year? Well, last year they, they finished six and four. Uh, they fell in the playoffs. They they had a fantastic run. They kind of lost the games that they were supposed to, and then they they 
blew out guys if they were supposed to. But the first round, they had Emporia. And then the second round, they had uh, Blue Valley Southwest, which who would eventually win that game. But Seaman had a great year last year under first-year head coach Jared Swafford. And, um, coach Swafford, you know, he, he came from Perry LeCompton and was successful there. He got the job at Seaman. And last year was their first year in the spread offense. And, and the spread offense is drastically different than the wing tee offense that they ran a year prior, but you know, last year the offense that the, the spread concept was incredible. It was an incredible addition because uh, Camden Barda, who's now at Emporia State, had just, I mean, just an insane amount of weapons to throw to. Um, you know, PJ Vargas, Case and Stahlbomber, Brody Gormley, all those guys, and and they were unfortunately hampered with injuries at the running back uh, position. Um, with Caden Ireland and Aiden Poulter last year, which kind of kind of hurt them a little bit. But um, I think they're comfortable now. I, I think that they're comfortable in year two. Guys kind of know what to expect, what the what the offense is going to be like, what the defense is going to be like, all the offseason procedures to get you kind of ready for everything. And um, it allows the older guys to kind of uh, take that position with confidence. I think you'll see a lot of confidence within the, the senior group and, and some of the juniors as well that were there in Swafford system. But um, now that they have a level of comfort, I, I just think that they're just going to be themselves, which I, I think last year, I think I saw that coach Swafford talked to Rick Peterson and said that some guys just weren't comfortable in the system last year. It just took an adjustment and it took a while to get ready. But I think this year, you know, even with the losses of, of PJ Vargas and Camden Barda and Brody Gormley and Case and Stahlbarmer, you know, all going, you know, they're successful guys, you know, they'll, they'll always be remembered, but um, they definitely have some key returners coming back, which will be huge for them. Uh, Logan Cox and Sean Miller, there are two names you really need to watch out for um, on the offensive line and the defensive line, but um, I watched Sean Miller in practice a couple weeks ago and he just kind of, my jaw just dropped. I was like, this guy is he's, – he's going to be a name that you'll see a lot on the polling blocks. Um, when guards pull, they just blow somebody up and their their cleats fall off their, their feet. It's just like, you know, you know when you see one of those guys that just gets absolutely plopped uh, in the trenches, you'll know Sean Miller probably had something to do with it this year. But Logan Cox is also a stud. They get Bryson Vodder back, who just committed to uh, Kansas City, Kansas Community College for baseball the other day. Um, he's the ace of the baseball team, but he's also um, an incredible football player. And I think that um, everybody will attest to that. And But they got Callan Barta coming back, who led the team in interceptions. So he, a key defensive back coming back. And, um, you know, there's several guys that, that will be coming back. But it's also a young group. It's all You have your mix of vets and, and, and young guys, which I think is beneficial. So the vets will be able to kind of, pick up where, where everybody left off. And they, they, uh, they have a different schedule, a schedule that we've, we're not accustomed to because usually Seaman plays basically all the city teams and, and a couple out of league games. Um, but they'll usually, you know, play the whole entire Centennial league, but they're not in the Centennial league anymore. So, um, you know, they'll, they'll have Shawnee Heights, Lansing, Leavenworth, Baser, Linwood, Piper and, and Turner, which are they'll, they'll 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 have some new faces and different opponents, but I think year two in the spread offense and then um, coming back with the defense, I think I think Steeman could make some noise this year. I think they're they'll, they're a dark they're a dark horse definitely uh, when it comes to the Washburn rules and everybody else that we're kind of picking kind of high. Um, but I think I, I I think people should be fully confident in what um, Topeka Seaman will bring in year two of this new system. Yeah, no, I like Seaman. The Seaman's always going to be solid, so you always just got to watch out for him. Now, moving on to Shawnee Heights, they are a very, very young team. Um, they went five and five last year, and as I said, they're young. They're graduating. They graduated twenty-seven seniors last year. They play Seaman and T West in terms of their city games. So, I don't really know what to expect out of Shawnee Heights. I mean, they're always. I think they're always going to have some athletes. Um, but to, there's just not a lot of experience, you know, um, and their head coach said that he expects a lot of juniors to be starting this year, um, which is never a bad thing. It just depends on if those juniors have experience. Um, and I think we're just going to have to wait and see with them. 
Yeah, and I, you know, Jason Swept is year 20 of being uh, a head coach for Shawnee Heights and very respectable. Uh, Jason Swift is uh, one of the one, one of the top notch guys you just love chatting with, and he knows football uh, at the back of his hand. And uh, you mentioned it though, like they lost uh, just a huge group of seniors, um, which you know you think is never good, but they're also returning quite a bit. But we'll kind of get to that in a little bit. Last year they had a great run towards the end of the season. Um, they started out the season rough, but they ended up winning four of the last five. Um, and then kind of really kicked it in gear, which kind of gave them a little bit of momentum um, going into this season. I talked to him the other day and he said that the, the, the leadership of the kids is as good as ever. They're all bought in. Um, he told me that uh, he didn't have, he really didn't have to teach this group about hustle or effort, which is a big emphasis in Jason Swift's defense, offense, special teams. You have to have hustle and you have to be, I mean, you have to give it all, give it your all to be in the shiny Heights uh, lineup. If you want to see the field, you got to give it your all. And that's just the way Jason Swift rolls. Um, but they just go out and do it. And I, I think the way that he explained to me that he wasn't concerned about the young guys at all, because the young guys had a great summer. They showed up, they gave it all they had, and they, they really just want to play for him. And they want to play on this team, which is always good. And I think last year, the end of the year helped a lot. I think the biggest loss that they're going to have well, they have a few big losses, but one of the biggest losses that they have is, is Jaron Sanders, who ran for over 1,100 yards last year and he had 12 touchdowns. But they also lose their starting quarterback and they lose a couple great linemen and Matthew Etzel and Oren, and Oren uh, Busenitz. And I think that's it's not going to be great, but they also return uh, Riking Carver, um, Jacob Malcolm, Jaden Moore, Jaden Hawley. Um, the interesting thing about Jacob Malcolm is he – he caught 31 passes for 315 yards and four touchdowns last year, which was um, – that's always good to have back. So <laughs> I don't think they're upset about that. But on the defensive front, they returned Jay Jones, uh, Jaden Berry, uh, Christian Gonzalez, and then uh, Alex Dittman – or Alex Dittman. And I think that um, as concerning as the number of seniors that they lost is, I think that what they have in return and what they have coming up um, will should eliminate all concerns. And I think I said that about Seaman as well. Um, but, I, you know, I talked to Jared Swafford and Jason Swift both, and they, they are very confident in the young group that they have. And they're very – well, Jason Swift in particular is very pleased with, with the way that guys showed up and they had over 100 guys show up for, for summer workouts and stuff. So um, keep an eye on Shawnee Heights. I think that they can, they can make some noise this year. Um, Jason Swift's always going to have a great group out there. So always be prepared to see kind of what they have, uh, have come in this year. Yeah. And when you have, when you have continuity like that in the coaching room, I mean, it's just, you always got to expect at least a solid season. You can never expect it just to fall off a cliff. We're talking about Silver Lake. You go from maybe the best high school football coaching in Kansas history to a guy that, you know, he was an alumni. He was great for the program. He, he's a great football player. But, you know, what, is there going to be a drop-off when you go from the guy that you had to the new guy? Um, so they went 9-3 and three last year. Silver Lake's always going to be good. Um, they're always going to have talent. But once again, you add Hayden to this schedule. They don't have to play Holton like Rossville and Hayden do, but you still have to play Hayden and Rossville. And those are both tough games. Riley County is another tough game. Um, so – We'll just have to see with Silver Lake, but I think I think they'll be successful, obviously. But um, are they going to live up? Do you think to the to the hype that they always have? Yeah, you mentioned it. Uh, every single, I think every single Topeka and Shawnee County team is going to have a tougher schedule this year because they don't they don't know some of the guys that they're going to play. Ross or um, Silver Lake has a tough September. They kind of have they they lighten it up in October a little bit, but you look at Riley County, but Hey, by the way, let's talk real quick before we get back to Silver Lake. Jordy Nelson, you talked to Jordy Nelson today. I did. I know. I know this is a little off topic and off the road a little bit. I, you know, my guy Caleb got to talk to to Jordy Nelson today, so that's pretty cool. But. Yeah, Jordy Nelson. He um he was donating I think twenty five hundred dollars to some elementary school teachers down at Bluemont, I think, and uh, he 
he's one of the most generous dudes you'll ever meet. He's just so down to earth, lives on a huge farm, um, still obviously still jacked because he's he lives on a farm. Um, but he's just super nice. It was it was definitely a really cool experience and uh, one that I'll remember for a long time. Okay, that was fantastic. I just wanted to throw that in there, plug that in for all of our TSN listeners that my guy, Caleb, my guy, Caleb's awesome. Anyway, so Riley County, right out of the gate, September 2nd at Riley County. Then they have Hayden in St. Mary's, Rock Creek, and Rossville. That four-game stretch, well, that five-game stretch is going to be brutal. And I know uh, Logan Pegram talked to Rick Peterson, the new head coach for Silver Lake, talked to Rick Peterson. And the first line he said when I read Rick Peterson's uh, story on topsports.news was uh, his quote was those first five games are like, oof, welcome to Silver Lake. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a tough that's a tough go right out of the gate. But you mentioned one of the, the greatest football coaches of all time, one of the most winning winningest coaches in Kansas high school football history is gone. Logan Pegram's in and Logan Pegram, like you said, Silver Lake alum. Um, was at it was at Free State uh, last year. He also uh, played collegiately at Northern Illinois. So bringing that experience is also great. He's also got some fantastic assistant coaches, a couple of Shrine Bowl guys that are on his staff. So he just wants to to keep that rich tradition of successful football going in Silver Lake. I think what I've gotten out of everything, um, you know, just knowing about what Rick has written or from what I've heard about from what I've heard from people in the Silver Lake community is that Pegram just wants to keep the tradition going. He doesn't want to do anything unorthodox or change anything or, or start something new. Um, he, you know, a place with eight state championships and 18 championship game appearances, you don't want to scratch everything out, cut it all up, burn it on fire. You want to, you want to keep it going. You want to keep the momentum going. And I think that's what what he wants to do and I think that's what he's assured everybody is that we just want to keep winning football games it's that simple we want to be the best versions of ourselves that we can and I think I really respect that about coach Pegram is that he he doesn't want to you know change everything comp- completely he just wants to you know add add some wrinkles here and there but of course because it's his team um, but they just want to win football games and I think CJ Hamilton is the uh is the guy you don't want to be the guy that replaces the guy but Logan Pegram is replacing the guy. But I think if he wants to follow that system, I think that's a great way to go. Um, from what I've read, uh, Rick, Rick Peterson's reporting and stuff, I think that's a great way to go. They got a lot of great guys coming back too. Uh, Troy Hyman, that lengthy wide receiver, you got him coming back. Uh, you get you get some linemen back too. You get uh, Caden Walker and Braxton McDaniel back on that front, um, which is like, like I mentioned, if you can always return offensive linemen, I am a former offensive lineman who played collegiately. So like I'm going to have an, a, a, a bias that shouldn't probably be discussed, but I, <laughs> I think those two guys coming back is going to be big for Silver Lake because they, they like to spread the ball around. They like to throw the ball quite a bit, which is awesome to see at, at not a class 6A, but class 2A, class 3A. It's great to see uh, the ball spread around a little bit. Tanner Martin, who was the backup for um, – uh, Dagan Kruger last year. Dagan Kruger was QB one last year, so they have Tanner Martin who who knows that or knows what it's like to be in that system. I think the system's going to change, but um, you know, it'll be under center most likely. Um, and then you have Eli Barnes, Blake Redmond, Chase Root, who are all coming back to Chase Root's also an offensive lineman, but they're all coming back to the offensive side of the ball. But there's also, from what I've been hearing, there's several freshmen that could actually. Um, Makes some noise this year. Dane Johnson, Joel Miller, and, and Ben Renfro are all freshmen that have potential to kind of be in the starting lineup this year, which would be interesting to see. Um, the talent in the Silver Lake community and, so, and the kids that, that go to that high school is unlimited, so I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some freshmen thrown in there that, that looked like that they were upperclassmen. But, yeah, we mentioned that, that schedule. Oh, God horrible so how it seems how it seems to be this year you get these this division it's just it's just gonna be tough um Mm -hmm. moving back to the city Topeka High so Topeka High used to be on this level where they were I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say a powerhouse but they were up there they were 
consistently one of the best teams in the state, one of the top teams in the in the city, in the county for sure. But they're they're kind of experiencing a little bit of a fall from grace. Um, last year they went two and seven, um, and this year it does not get any easier. You know, you start the season with Mays, with one of the best quarterbacks in the nation, um, and Avery Johnson, K State commit. Um, and then you still you still got to play Manhattan, you got to play Wichita Northwest, rural, and you got to play Junction City still. So I think that schedule isn't going to be easy on them. Um, but they've got a lot of young guys that, that are coming up and um, some really good athletes that I think can can really show what they can do and maybe maybe win a couple of these upset games. And I think we're going to see a lot that we don't expect that it's we got this year. Right. And last year, I mean, they didn't have the win loss record that they wanted to. Um, I think they went three and seven last year, but they, they had a running back, Tylan Alejos, who is a walk on at KU now. Uh, Tylan Alejos was, um, considered one of the best athletes in the city last year. You think about Topeka High's rich tradition in the backfield. You think about guys like Mike McCoy and, and Kai Thomas and Tylan Alejos. You think about all these guys that just would just run the heck out of the ball. And, you know, the, the uh, yards, yards after contact has always been a big thing at Topeka High. It's like these guys just don't seem to, to fall down. So seeing who's going to be behind the backfield last year, and seeing them not be as reliant as Tylen, as they were in Tylen Alejos last year, because Alejos touched the ball a lot last year. Um, he was he played defense, played offense, and for a six-day school, played both sides of the ball. Last year, he touched the ball a lot. So, But you have an emerging star in B.J. Kennedy, and B.J. Kennedy is getting several Division One looks and Division One offers, and, and deservedly so, I think, you know, his older sister – Nigel Kennedy is, is at Stanford now playing softball. And I think, uh, I think BJ is one of the best athletes in the city. Um, you know, he's at that tight end spot, defensive end. I'm curious to see what, what it looks like with him this year. And the returning Peyton Wheat, I, I'm pretty sure Peyton Wheat will be back at quarterback this year, who really shined in some points of the season last year. And I was a big fan of watching Peyton Wheat grow. Um, it seems like as soon as he got comfortable in Carlos Kelly's system, um, he was awesome. He was he was really awesome to watch. And last year, like I said, they they took some they took some lumps. Uh, they started out with Junction City and Washburn Rural and, and took some tough losses there. But they scored seventy points on on Highland Park last year. They won a really impressive game against Deportia, where Tylen Alejos really shined and he three hundred plus yards on the ground. And um, but <laughs> this year, yeah, that that. Uh, Mays on a Saturday afternoon at one o'clock, which is something I'm not used to. I, I don't think in my wildest dreams, excluding playoffs, I don't remember the last time a high school football game played at a Saturday afternoon at one o'clock, but it's at Hummer Sports Park. So everybody listening, <laughs> you just go down the road, go down the road and watch a Kansas State commit and, and Avery Johnson, who's one of the, the top QBs in the nation. Uh, play Topeka High, that will be a wake-up call. I think that Topeka High's young guys, I think playing Avery Johnson right away is, is, is tough. It, it really is, and that Mays system is is really good, but it's not easy. Uh, you, you get uh, Mays and then Manhattan, and Manhattan had that share of the Centennial League uh, crown last year with Washburn Rural, which we'll get to later, but um, they have some winnable games after that with Liberal and Emporia. Uh, but then they they have Wichita Northwest and Washburn Rural, and they get Hayes later. So it's a tough look for for Topeka High. But um, Carlos Kelly is is a guy. He's an experienced coach, veteran coach, and um, they have some significant athletes on that team that everybody should definitely keep an eye on. But um, I think Topeka High it'll definitely be. I wouldn't say rebuilding because they have a lot to build off on with an experienced veteran quarterback and and tight end and they lose uh Danny Slee by the way Danny Slee was the, the the left tackle for them last year right tackle offensive tackle uh hybrid but he was big guy big guy who pancakes for breakfast lunch and dinner this guy was <laughs> yeah six three six four three hundred plus yeah that's always going to be a loss but I think defensively they're returning a bunch of key players back and offensively it'll definitely losing 
thousand plus yards on the ground and from the line of scrimmage from Tylen Alejos losing that. But like I said, if you have a veteran quarterback, a veteran coach, um, you know, I think things are are gonna, you know, they could surprise some people this year. I think it could look up for some people, but Topeka High really impressed me in points last year. And a lot of those times that they impressed me was from the young group, the the, the group that can make an impact this year. So I wouldn't write off Topeka High this year. Um, I, I would definitely, definitely look out for some of those developmental pieces to really shine this year. Yeah. And um, one thing you can always count on is Topeka High having some generational athlete just come out of nowhere. Um, but yeah, as you mentioned, the, the Saturday afternoon, I think Avery Johnson is going to play on Saturday afternoons pretty often. So I think he should probably get used to it. But um, moving on to across the city, T West. So T West is, has had an interesting last couple of years. They went three and six last year. Um, once again, we're always going to mention it, a tough schedule. They got rural, they got Seaman, they got Heights. Um, but I think the big storyline this year is, is their QB, Malachi Berg. Um, he's, he's, he's truly the star of this team. And um, their coach went on, went on record yesterday saying, uh, calling out these colleges, saying, don't be late to the party. Like, get your eyes on this guy right now, because if you don't, you're going to miss out. And I think this guy is really going to prove it this year. And I think he's, he's got a lot in the tank that, that we're going to see. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of what T West is doing. Um, and I, I like where they're at. I do as well. Rick Norton's not wrong. I think that kid or co- college coaches uh, should be knocking on the door for Mal Kiteberg. He's a four-year starter from a freshman to a senior, which is rare to see. Um, we'll get to a little bit later with Brayton DeWeese from Washburn Rural. He's a continuous starter who's, you know, he's been in the system for a while. But uh, Mal Kiteberg, man, he's, as you mentioned, he, he, he'll he be, I think he's one of the best quarterbacks not only in the city, but he should be considered as as a top quarterback in the state. I think he can run 100 yards on the ground, no problem. Um, and I think he can just he, he throw it all over the place. And he's very accurate, um, pinpoint accurate. He could take some hits. I've seen him take some hits, and he'll get up faster than the person that delivered that hit. The Malachi Bird man, he's he's a complete stud. I watched him um, kind of compete. Uh, last spring in the 785 elite it's a seven on seven camp and malachi berg uh just pinpoint accuracy he just gets better and better every single year and he i if you're looking for a guy that you want to fight for you want to play for if you're a first year coach like rick norton is in topeka west system that's the guy you want to have because that's the guy that can set the tone for years to come for your young guys and for the people that are coming up and i think malachi berg is a perfect example. He's a great, he's a great kid too, by the way. He's a fantastic person to talk to. He's this polite, super nice guy, but he's also just a leader amongst men and he could have a bad attitude when he wants to. I mean that as good as possible. No, you, I I think as a, as a QB one, I think you got to have that little bit of a, that little bit of playing in there. So I think, I think you got to have that little bit of a, not necessarily cockiness, but you got to be confident to, to be a, to be a QB one, especially in a, in a top city school so yeah he's got an edge man yeah and then the three wins last year right they they were not necessarily learning or anything or it wasn't a learning curve but they just you know just took their bumps and bruises as is but um you know <clears throat> we can go about malachi berg all day he's a one-of-a-kind qb and and we'll talk about later in washburn rule but uh, the points last year, you know, there was a lot of times where the defense would give up a high amount of points. Um, but they, there was points last year where I was really impressed with the defense. And their three wins, there was, there was a few times where I'm like, oh, man, Topeka West, when they come back next year, they could be a really solid team. I think Topeka West, kind of like Seaman, could be a dark horse. I think with with everything that's gone on with the schedule shakeup, it's, uh, it's a fresh start for almost everybody. I think Topeka West is, and I think, you know, we talked about Malachi Berg. It's, this could be a, a game changer year by Kylan Park and Topeka West. And it's just, Topeka West has a, a huge opportunity here with first year head coach Rick Norton to kind of just set the tone, reset the program, um, 
and just win some football games. So seeing Topeka West this year will be will be fun. I, I'm curious to see what what everything's going to look like in a new system now that Ryan Kelly's gone to Washburn. Um, seeing Topeka West should be should be fun this year. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and then finally wrapping it up um, with the football teams, uh, Washburn Rural, and. If I have to choose a team that I'm going to be watching heavy this year, it's going to be Washburn. They're returning a lot, including stud linebacker Ty Weber. Um, they went eight and two last year. As I said, returning multiple key starters. Uh, you start looking at this schedule, it, it's it's really tough to find a game that they're just outmatched. Um, I could definitely see them running through this schedule, and I'm excited to see, I, I'm excited to see their run and what they what they can do. Yeah, they're not outmatched really in any any game this year. I think that they're they're hungry to get back out there and to take the title for themselves and not share it with anybody else. I think the Washburn Rural is really, really just itching to get back out there and just kind of finish the job. They didn't end the way that they wanted to last year with that playoff loss. And they're super young last year. They're super young the year before. They're also su- kind of young this year. Not super young, but kind of young. And they got, they got a lot of guys. So this is a scary, scary team. This is a really good team. Um, kind of like how I mentioned with Rossville, I kind of how you just know you have this like sneaky suspicion that like, yeah, this is a team. So Washburn Rules got got a, quite the team this year, and I think the defense itself. You know, you think about those. If you're an NFL fan, obviously I am. If you think about like some of those defenses, where it's just like, mm-hmm, those are those are some guys. And I think Washburn Rural has that mm-hmm effect where you're like, yeah, they're going to be good. So on off on offense, they're they consistently put up 40 bombs on people last year, and their defense just shut down guys consistently, and they they thud you. They they have some quality TFLs, and and they're just experienced smart high iq guys and um and then brandon deweese who's been under center uh last year or two and he'll, he'll be back again so that always helps kind of like with malachi Berga, topeka west and i mean the sky's the limit for washburn rule they have a unique chemistry and culture that they're kind of creating over there it's super special and you think about jc heim and severini and ty weber and Deweese, I'm missing a ton of names, by the way. So I, I hope people don't take that personally because it's just there's just so many good guys on that team. And um man, yeah, Washburn Rural, they they can make some noise this year. And I wouldn't be surprised if they made a, a pretty significant run in uh, October or November. Yeah, if there wasn't um if there wasn't a team named Derby in 6A, you would you would really consider them to be to be one of the top teams to watch for a real state title, um, which I'm not, yeah. you're not, we can't put it out of the picture that, that they don't, they don't go up there right with Derby. So they got the athletes to do it. And um, if anyone's going to do it, I think Washburn's got a really good shot. Um, so that was the football. Um, now we're going to head over to volleyball and uh, soccer to wrap up the rest of the fall schedule. So with volleyball is where we we'll start. Uh, Silver Lake is going to be a team to watch uh, finished last year, 28 and nine. To the Mid East League champs, and then Seaman finished fourth in state last year. They're looking to return even stronger. And then also finishing fourth in state was Washburn Rural, who had an amazing season, forty-one and two record, um, and they're looking to jump right back into that. So, in soccer, um, Washburn Rural always going to be dominant in soccer. They're looking to win their twenty-eighth straight Centennial League title. Uh, Shawnee Heights. Um, last year won the United Kansas Conference Championship with a 9-1 and record, and then Hayden made it all the way to the state quarterfinals. But that's just a quick wrap-up of soccer and volleyball. But before I wrap this up, Isaac, you wanna, you got anything else? Yeah, I, I think with with Washburn Rural this year, and, you know, if, if you kind of follow us on Twitter, we'll have everything in terms of volleyball, cross-country, golf, soccer, swimming, you name it. Caleb and I and, and Rick Peterson will, will kind of have you covered on that. But our Zoom meeting timer is kind of running down, and it was kind of my fault because we kind of uh, ran off course with football. But, um, you know, Washburn Rural, um, 
we just discussed with football, how many, how many returners they have. It's also the same on the volleyball court. Uh, Kentucky commit Brooklyn delay is back. Uh, you have Jaden, Jada Ingram back. You have um, Zoe Canfield back. You have, I mean, just like I said, here we are again with Washburn rural where there's just so many names to run off. You just can't name them all, but uh, Washburn rural uh, have that huge, huge win loss or huge win to loss ratio last year where it's like, yep. And they just fell short of the state title. Um, Washburn rural is a team volleyball as well, where you have to keep an eye out on for, because that's just a big returning group of girls that are on the court again. So Washburn rural will definitely make some noise this year. They'll make us, I think they'll even be better than they were last year, but just because of how many, people are back um state title champs and basketball last year a lot of those girls that play basketball that won that state title also play volleyball and these people these girls just know each other so well and i think the chemistry in washburn rural is great and you seaman and silver lake and rossville a lot of people that return um have this unique chemistry and boys soccer last uh, boys soccer it's washburn rules to lose as well Rules just dominated the high school sports uh, sports scene in general for all sports last year. Um, so high school boys soccer, as you mentioned, have that very long winning streak of the Centennial League title. So, um, but you don't sleep on teams like like Seaman and and Topeka High and stuff like that when it com- comes to volleyball. Um, uh, volleyball it, it could be interesting, but I think it, just like soccer and football and everything else, it's Washburn rules to lose, but. Um, I wouldn't go crowning any, anybody just yet. You know, it'll be highly competitive in both uh, volleyball and soccer this year, I think. Yeah, so it seems like Washburn Rural is going to be the betting favorite in a lot of the fall sports this year. Um, but, yeah, that's I think that's going to do it for this week's episode of Top Sports Talk. Um, we're going to be back next week previewing some games. Excited for that. Um, and remember, if you enjoy Shawnee County sports, always like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you never miss an upload, and then head over to topsports.news. Um, we're always going to have you updated there. Have us on Twitter. That'll all be in the description. I'll, I'll link both of our Twitter accounts. Follow us there. We'll always leave you up. We'll always keep you updated. Um, it's what we love doing. So uh, without further ado, I'll, uh, we'll see you next week.